I'm not totally sure whether my, I have a couple of slides, whether they will work, but let's see. Yeah. Yes. It's here. Good. Good, good, good. So really happy to be here. And I do have to admit that I do feel some pressure after the morning sessions by Alex and Carl. But I will try my best. And, and so uh, I, uh, like was referred already in the morning, so I'm giving this speech in quite unusual circumstances. And I just want to mention that, that the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, the death of innocent people and human suffering has certainly shocked all of us. And uh, as was noted, earlier. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that uh, the war has caused is that it has changed the old world view in a heartbeat. Europe and the Nordics are rethinking positions and policies in this changed situation. Key question is how to promote the classical Nordic and European values of collaboration, fairness, rule of law and peace. And while the war is shadowing everything now, we must also continue to think about innovative solutions for the pressing global issues like uh, climate change and to promote the well-being and competitiveness of Nordic societies as have been brought up here earlier. So the question at the heart of this session is regulation versus innovation. And it's very relevant uh, in this new global context. When we speak about uh, regulation in particular, the EU is the key framework for the Nordic countries. So my main focus will be on that, on what the Nordics should be doing to ensure Europe creates the best possible platform for the Nordic model and in particular for innovation, because as was brought up by the earlier uh, or in the morning, uh, it's all about competitiveness uh, after all. So when we talk about uh, innovation, uh, innovation benefits from collaboration, it benefits from free flow of information, free flow of ideas and people, investments in education, and from stability all of which should be the building blocks, building blocks of the Nordic and European model. When we look at the R&D ratio, uh, uh, investment ratio to GDP, Nordics fare quite well in European comparison. But without collaboration, the impact remains limited. Let's take one example. The first GSM network that was built 30 years ago here in Finland, it was a result of increased STEM investment in the previous decades and close collaboration between among European countries. And during the next decades, it became the global standard driving innovation. There are so many other examples where great innovations have been born through international collaboration and where the Europe, when Europe and the Nordics have been an essential force. Uh, examples of that, for example, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, the International Space Station, and to mention one truly European system that could lead the way for others in the world, EU's emission uh, trading system mobilizing market forces to reduce emissions. The widespread global collaboration that contributed to the development of these innovations is under threat, as we also heard in the morning. In recent years, we've seen worrying signs of economic, political, and technological decoupling. Decoupling can be hard to define, but essentially, it consists of uh, a general loosening of international ties away from multilateralism and international collaboration and towards greater unilateralism and even protectionism. It is the idea that collaboration is for wimps. For small 
open economies like the Nordics, this development is in particular boring. Applied to technology, this might mean that companies find themselves operating in rapidly diminishing networks of innovation, efficiency, and economies of scale. If the fragmentation also extends to technology standards, the change of direction towards openness and cooperation will become difficult and slow. The International Monetary Fund has estimated that the technological fragmentation could result in a GDP decline of 5% in many countries. The current war is another unfortunate step in that direction. Uh, in addition to human suffering, it will increase separation, reduce trade and collaboration, and could put the development of global standards into a question. All things that have created wealth, well-being, and peace in the past. But the current uh, situation has also shown uh, that there is power uh, of in regulation. So just look at the sanctions imposed, aid mobilized related to the invasion, and the widespread support of them among policymakers and public. Let's then talk a little bit how regulation could better promote uh, innovation. As was <laughs> brought up earlier here today, uh, Nokia, uh, the Nordics is the home for both Nokia and Ericsson, and the CEOs even participate joint sessions together. And, and both of these companies create the critical infrastructure needed for fourth industrial revolution and widespread digitalization. This can be a great strength for the R&D investments, ecosystems, knowledge hubs created around core technologies like 5G, edge, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Also, the biggest of Europe's 74 unicorns, Klarna, is from Sweden. Yet, overall, unfortunately, European technology industry is a dwarf, in particular compared to the US. So clearly we have work to do. Private sector should be leading on innovation, deciding where to invest and how. It is for the public sector to create conditions that best enable innovation, support deploying these innovations and scaling them up. There are many reasons why US tech companies have done better and where we should focus on. One is markets of scale. EU is the largest market in the world, but we've had a bit of incapacity to build on this strength as uh, our sort of global share of GDP has declined from what it was uh, in 2008, it was 25.6%. And 2018, it was 18.6%. The second, access to capital. Third, innovation hubs like Silicon Valley. And then fourth, which is the theme of, of this session here, the less fragmented and more flexible rec regulation framework is one of the significant reasons. And let's focus on that last one in particular, as it is on the focus here today. In short, it's all about also in, in, in this, is this respect, one of the things is that uh, we need to complete true European single market and digital single market. This is essential for business to be able to scale and to take benefit from the large EU market currently suffering from unnecessary fragmentation. Uh, as an example of the importance of the single market to the Nordics, I take a Swedish example here. More than 70% of Swedish exports go to countries within the single market, and while 80% of import, Swedish imports come from those uh, countries. Uh, smart regulation plays and standards, they play an Im important part in this. And I'll just mention a few 
uh, topics where we could focus on and uh, having more harmonized approach where it matters. And as an example, I could mention the schedule for 5G spectrum allocations and auctions uh, because uh, they enable uh, gigabit connectivity, which is central to innovation. And now this process is a bit hindered by regulatory obstacles and including sometimes complex and bureaucratic installation regimes. Uh, then second, trying to st stop standardization from becoming too political uh, or legalized. Traditionally, the reliance in e EU regulation on many thousands of European harmonized standards has served Europe well. And there's appreciation appreciations of the European standard system in, in the EU and worldwide. If we lose EU's constructive influence on world standardization, it is possibly damaging global and European value chains relying heavily on world-class standards and may end up accelerating uh, the trend of decoupling. Let's take then another concrete example uh, that is key for innovation and that is data. Establishing common data standards and data exchange models to ease data sharing across Europe member states and to promote the interoperability of data within the EU is important. When we come to regulate artificial intelligence and data use, we need to bear in mind the different kinds of use use its cases as they have different kinds of uh, privacy, privacy considerations. The fact that collecting data on individuals and households is very different to collecting data on manufacturing efficiency or wasteful industry techniques. How can then uh, regulation better promote innovation? There are areas where we need regulation. We must prioritize smart regulation, regulation that encourages rather than restricts innovation, both at EU and national levels. The approach should be not regulation first, but regulation when needed. For instance, platform companies powered by network effects provide an interesting angle to this. In the US, the regulation traditionally has been light touch. And this has allowed platform companies to expand first. Regulation has been introduced later as needs have arisen, both for reasons of perhaps limited competition, so competition law, and, and uh, sometimes also uh, perhaps uh, because of uh, uh, content that has been de delivered based on those platforms. As a result, seven of the world's ten most valuable companies are platforms, at least part in part. And uh, out of those seven platforms, six are American and one is Chinese. And also the same thing has been the way to work in China that the uh, regulation was very light touch in the beginning, but it has uh, significantly changed in recent years and, and, and becoming uh, tighter. We know that this uh, platform uh, economy development has not only been positive, there's also been some some negative sides uh, to that, which has then increased the need for regulation. I'll finish off by saying, uh, if I can get this, hmm, the la oh yeah, it is there, I just couldn't read. So uh, by, by stating that never has Nordic cooperation been as important as it is now, even though clearly, based on what was discussed earlier, we have a lot of work to do. 
uh, but you should also recognize that it does not have to be innovation versus regulation. It is possible to create better conditions for innovation also through regulation. But it takes a lot of thought, foresight, and also public-private uh, collaboration. And, and as was mentioned earlier, the leading idea needs to be uh, creating competitiveness. And to end with a final point, all actions to improve regulation are secondary. If the world doesn't return to international collaboration, the rule of law and peaceful coexistence, those are in many ways preconditions for innovation. Uh, Nordics is a close group uh, with extremely good and close ties and shared trust and values and uh, never has this been more important than now. Thank you.